For USCfootball.com, I'm Keely Yor here with Dan Weber for instant analysis of USC's Tuesday practice of Stanford Week and an unusually cold uh, practice. I think California decided it's fall now. I'm not sure. Uh, but it was a serious practice, a physical practice, maybe not as physical as we've seen, but it seemed like a pretty good Tuesday practice for the Trojans. Yeah, I think they were ser- I think they realized and today's the day they do first and second down work and I think they realized how well they did on first down especially against Stanford, especially on defense. And I think Clay talked about last year uh, uh, they held Stanford under 3 yards uh, a try on first down, 2.6 yards. He said if you do that, then you're not in third and short against them and they're the best team in the world in third and short. It just looked like a very serious down to business uh Let's just, you know, do what we have to do. Uh, JT Daniels just totally looks in charge now. It looks like yeah. he's been in charge forever, uh, even though after practice he did actually say, I still do some kid things. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm a kid, you know, and nobody can, other than his sense of humor where he, you know, really uh, cracks jokes or gets on guys or whatever, they, they can't really come up with too many things, that he, too many kid things, although he does say, Somebody tried to say, you know, are you big deal on campus now? What's it like? He said, I don't know. I just get on my bike and, I, you know, go to camp, go to class, and that's it. So it doesn't seem like he's uh, soaking in much of the, uh, you know, JT, uh, you know, college uh, football hero uh, deal. Yeah, Helton was asked, how do you stop a Bryce Love? How do you stop a tough Stanford team that USC actually beat twice uh, last year? What do you have to say for that? Well, I think the big part of it is um, you – you stop them on first down. You really, really do not let them get that, uh, you know, get two downs where they've got them third and shorty. So that's that's really the key. Uh, obviously, with Costella, the quarterback, you got to get him a little uncomfortable. His, uh, I think Clay said that, you know, they're passing where they've changed, where they've gotten better is their ability to adjust last week when San Diego State put all those guys in the box and uh, and really held Bryce Love, what, 50 yards, and uh, and they were able to throw the ball three uh, touchdown passes to J.J. or Sega Whiteside, who, uh, the you know, big kid, um, caught, you know, caught a couple of big balls against USC last year toward the end of the game that got them back in the game where they just throw it up and he just goes up over everybody. USC is playing that a lot better. They're, they're working on it. They're seeing it. Their techniques are better. Uh, they did a lot of work today. Uh, but as Clay said, you can tell how much Stanford works. Now you got a 6'7 tight end, you know, 6'4 JJ, and uh, uh, they get inside the 10. They're throwing the fade into yeah. the end zone, and you better be ready to play, uh, play the jump ball, which is one of the reasons you got to probably figure out how you can get uh, get KJ uh, Costello uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, he also said you can't replicate a 4-2 uh, in practice when in regards to Bryce Love. Uh, but preparing on the other side of the ball, we saw USC uh, practice a lot of deep balls uh, today on offense. Uh, we saw uh, we talked to Michael Pittman and JT Daniels and both kind of alluded to that there were some chemistry issues, especially when it comes to that three uh, quarterback rotation that they had all fall camp uh, with wide receivers. So that's something that they definitely tried to take care of at least today. Yeah, JJ or JT said uh, I'm so caught up with the Jays. Uh, said I was a hair off. I just uh, you know a, a second off. Uh, we could have had three more touchdowns. And just just that little bit, you know. We'll we'll, we'll work it out. And he did talk about something we've talked about that uh, he hadn't had that much opportunity. I mean, when you had the three-way uh, quarterback uh, competition. Every, nobody got to really throw a lot to anybody. Yeah. Uh, but, of course, as, J, as JT said today, he said, you know, I've been playing with uh, Amon Ross since we were in the seventh grade. So, of course, we've got a lot of chemistry built up. And he said, we'll build it up with, you know, all the other guys. He said, we're going to be fine. But uh, he said, we have to do, you have to work on it. You have to, you know, it just doesn't happen. And so, uh, uh, but he said, man, we were so close on, on three of those balls. And, and what a difference that that would have made. But uh, said it was just me. I was just a little bit late getting it uh, where I needed to get it. But uh, but otherwise, he, he I mean he's obviously never going to be somebody that sounds like he's panicked or worried about something or whatever. He said, no, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get it done. It'll be fine.
as far as uh, interviews today, it was an offensive day. Who else did you get to talk to offensively? I talked to Aka Cedric, talked about, um, you know, they know it's going to be a physical game. He said, we do, you just got to, you know, you just got to be physical. He said, of course, he said, I'm always going to be physical, but you just got to, you know, have your pad level down and you just got to know, you know, you're playing Stanford and that's, uh, that's the game that, that's going to be played. Uh, I talked to Amon Ra, he gets to play against his brother. First time he's ever played against his brother. Uh, said he'd maybe, you know, say a, a little bit right before the game. He said, not much. I'm just, you know, wishing well. And then, um, and he, he's looking, you can tell he's kind of looking for it. And I think the thing with both JT and Amon Ra, last week they had their first game in the Coliseum. This week it's their first road game in college football. So uh, I think they're, they're looking, you know, forward to those things, but, but JT has a good way about it because he said, you can't make the Stanford game any bigger than any other game. You've got to prepare for it like you always do, you know, and then you just, you prepare for it and you go out and play. And it's that, it's that kind of, you know, really, uh, you know, nonchalant down, not nonchalant, but just he not getting all carried away about yeah. This he just said. This is you know how you get ready for football games, and you you know you, you you get yourself ready. You go out and practice, and you know then you go play. It's it's like a really simple way to to look at things. But he said you don't get all caught up about ooh this is Stanford or ooh this is my first road game or anything. He said you just can't have those kinds of extra uh, emotions or extra feelings about about a game. Mm -hmm. Doesn't do any good. As far as injuries go, Porter Gresson was a full participant after playing a lot of snaps on Saturday, so that's a good sign for his knee health. Uh, Palaie Nayoteote uh, returned to practice for the first time since tearing his meniscus. Uh, he was pulled halfway through health and said that was precautionary. Uh, and Toe Lobendon also returned to practice. He got some teamwork and then did some scout teamwork. So Helton says they're going to have to see day by day how his body res responds to practice. And then we didn't get some updates on guys that actually went out during practice. Brandon Peely was one of those guys. He left practice, got his uh, wrist slash hand tape more. That was something that uh, he injured during Saturday's game. Uh, he wasn't able to finish practice, so we didn't get a full uh, diagnosis on what that was. I, I guess because he started practice, he finished practice, he did all the things that you got to do. He he certainly has a swollen thumb wrist kind of uh, yeah. that area. Uh, they didn't even have all that. They had the support part of it taped up, but they didn't even have, you know, like the actual thumb itself uh, taped up. And I think it was really encouraging he wasn't maybe really, you know, he went in the first series, wasn't really maybe happy with the tape job. And so he goes in with trainer Russ Romano, and then he's back out there. And it's kind of an important deal because what they did today is they're playing a lot of, in a four-man front with uh, Malik Dorton and Marlon Tuipilotu and Jay Tufele and Brandon Peely. So yeah. you're getting to see the three uh, uh, second-year guys right next to one another. That's kind of neat. Yeah, but he wasn't able to finish practice, so we will check up on that. Did he not finish? He didn't finish. Oh, I, I saw him go back in there. Okay. He went back in after he came back and got right. taped, but then he left again. <laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, I don't blame him. I mean, I don't. I was shocked that he played tried to practice as much yeah. as he did. I thought that was, so I have a feeling, I, I don't know that I would have let him go back in. He, once he showed, you know, I'm, I'm okay here, let's, let's go. It's just some pain and, and swelling. There's no question that he's got a lot of, a lot of swelling in there. So I, I might've told him, uh, you don't need to do any more yeah. because he, he, he got in a lot of practice way more than I would have guessed he was going to get in. Yeah, Josh Follow also did not practice today. Neither of the Imator Bebes, they did not practice. And then notable Caleb Tremblay came out uh, with a left foot ankle injury. That would happen towards the beginning of practice. He spent all of practice on the trainer's table, essentially. We didn't get an update on him. We couldn't really get a, a question in uh, today's presser, but that's something to watch for as well. Yeah, I mean, um, I like his quick twitch too. I mean, I, I just think he's one of those guys that gets off the ball, you know, quickly. So I think there's always going to be a place, you know, in the game for, for uh, Caleb. Uh, one of the guys we're seeing more and more of is Jacob Lichtenstein, yeah. who's really looks like he belongs out there. I mean, he's filled out and he's just, a, you know, he comes out of his stance really well. And I, I just think, uh, I think there's going to be a place for him. Uh, 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 Liam Jimmins uh, with the turf toe kind of, uh, 
yeah. still a, a little bit away, uh, you know, from being out. We saw Marquis step in yeah. a really good run against the first defense, and then a little bit of a uh, out of bounds confrontation, and kind of got pulled away. From, but he did, he didn't look like he was backing off at all. I was uh, real impressed with him. So I'd say more uh, positive for sure than than anything else as far as the uh, the injury front. Mm -hmm. Heldon was asked about the timing of playing Stanford so early in the season and he explained how it is it's either the second week or the third week because both Stanford and USC play uh, Notre Dame later in the season um, but as far as USC goes how does playing Stanford this early prep them for the rest of the season? Uh, I mean yeah I, mean, I think without a doubt yeah. it, it's a good move uh, in that way. I still don't like it I mean I think it's uh, the, the idea that uh, uh, you've already had Washington go play Auburn and get beat, and that kind of knocks them out of the, you know, the, a chance at the top four right away. I mean, they can work their way back. But then you got your other two teams in the Pac-12 that have a shot at the playoffs, and one of them's going to knock the other one out in week two. So, and you've already had Bryce Love and, and Khalil Tate take a hit in the Heisman race. So this is not. It, and I know Clay said it's an agreement with Stanford and, and USC with the rest of the league so they can switch their Notre Dame date, you know, to play Notre Dame in October there and at the end of the year here. I just think USC and Stanford ought to go to the rest of the league and say, we don't want to keep doing that. You know, yeah. we don't like that. It's not smart. And, and tell the rest of the league, we're not going to do that. Nobody else has, you know, you're not going to see Alabama play LSU next week. It's just dumb. I mean, it's like cutting off your nose to bite your face, which is something the Pac-12 is really good at. Uh, but who cares what the rest of those teams see? You know, think you could set up the schedule so that that uh, you would be able to play, uh, you know, flip-flop the USC and, and Stanford games so that you'd play uh, – you know, Stanford when you play, uh, you know, Notre Dame and vice versa. You could do that if you wanted to. I think they're to the point where maybe they, they ought to want to, you know, do that. I mean, Stanford probably is hurt more than USC. Uh, if you've got better athletes, the sooner you play them, if you're both ready to play, your better athletes ought to have a chance uh, uh, early in the year. And you get to play them uh, this week. Stanford's not in class yet, so yeah. you won't. You know, have the students there, and you know, you're you, you'll have maybe as many USC fans as Stanford fans. Uh, I mean, that's that's what you hope with the weekender and all that. So, uh, so I don't know that it does either team a whole lot of good. But if you win this game, you know, but then then you got that thing where you gotta you're going to Texas. Do you have momentum built up, or is this one of those things with Texas losing to Maryland? You hope guys don't listen too much to people around them telling them how great they are yeah. and how you beat Stanford, you got no problem in Texas. It's so, you know. Mind games, mind games for sure. Lastly, uh, when I talked to you after Saturday's game and instant analysis, you said that USC had to change some things in practice. They had to practice more physical. What did you see today? Did it match up with what you wanted from them? Uh, I, I would use, you know, I, I used it, I consider it, Lee, that the term was seriously I thought they practiced okay. today. I didn't think it wasn't, it wouldn't have matched uh, how they practiced two weeks ago when they went that back-to-back -back Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, you know, uh, practices. I'd like to see them, just especially the offensive and defensive line groups, go a little bit more full line and full speed. Uh, I don't, we don't see that, and that seems to be the one place where where you you don't really get to see them um, uh, get off the ball as quickly. I mean, you don't like it when you're seeing them playing a UNLV, and it looks like UNLV is getting off the ball quicker than USC uh, at the start of the game. Yeah. You also, uh, they were so easy on them, say, last Wednesday. I do think it got uh, both Tyler Vons and Michael Pittman a little bit where they, you know, they weren't being really ridden by some guy uh, or, you know, held up by somebody, you know, and man-to-man -man and all that, where then they got into a game where somebody's really trying to keep you from running your route. And I thought it threw them off a little bit. So yeah. I think you need to do that as much as you can. In practice. I think tomorrow's practice will be more important because they just eased up so much last yeah. Wednesday. If tomorrow is more like two Wednesdays ago, then I'll, I'll feel better about it. But I think they really need to 
push them hard to get the uh, get the whole timing thing, and uh, you know the whole all those things that were maybe just not quite right uh, Saturday, uh, right this week. You've got to you know if you're going to play Stanford on the road, and you've got a chance to get to play right. Uh, you want practice to help you get there. And yeah. last Wednesday didn't help them, I don't think. Uh, we'll see about this Wednesday. Mm -hmm. All right, that's going to wrap it up for USC's Tuesday practice of Stanford Week. For Dan Weber, I'm Keely Or For more, check out uscfootball.com.